Hello everyone, this is Sam. For today's video, we're going to be having a look at one of the tools that were developed by a Guild Wars 2 player for the Guild Wars 2 players themselves. And this tool is Guild Wars 2 Profits Craft Everything tool. And I think that you should really give it a look because it is amazing. I have made a lot of money thanks to that tool. I think that you too could be doing it. We can millionaires, just trying to be cool. So first of all, it is important to talk about the fact that this tool is going to have you craft items that get sold on the trading post. That means that it is not specifically tailored for any of your needs and you have to make it yourself. So you're going to have to look at all of the fields and decide what is relevant to you. For example, for me, I have all the professions crafting at maximum level, which means that I can select any of these and it is still relevant. Now, if you are going to be wanting to use that tool, you also need to think about the fact that you are not the sole person selling crafted items on the trading post. That means that choosing to make a 0.25, which is to say 25% of a day's worth would mean that only four people like you would be crafting all the items for the entirety of the Guild Wars 2 market on a daily basis. This is definitely not the case, so you should be adjusting this to fit what you think is your weight in the market. So personally, I go for 0.01 because I think that it is the best and the most relevant for my own situation. You're going to be able to see that today's cost, return and total profit are going to be changing accordingly. The website being very heavy, it might go and not respond in your browser, which is not a problem. You seem to wait a little bit and it's going to finish updating by itself. The other things we're going to be looking at are going to be the minimum profit, the percent of profit and the velocity. These are going to be especially relevant to decide whether or not you want to go and make a lot of items that have small profits or instead trying to go for a few items that have a fairly hefty profit in order to reduce the time you will spend making the items. That is indeed one of the main points of that tool is that it counts the time you spend making stuff separately from the rest. Personally. I do not want to spend hours and hours crafting items. So as we can see, it finished updating. And right now it says that you need at least two hours and a half to make 137 gold. But by changing a few fields, we are going to be able to make this better for ourselves. So for the minimum profit, I would argue that at least five silver per item doesn't seem wrong. The minimum percent profit at 10% is okay for me and the minimum velocity as 10 is okay for me. So we're going to be updating the entirety of this. Hopefully it's not going to take as much time as the previous one. But actually the browser does not respond either. So we're going to have to wait a little bit. This tool really does look at everything, calculates the velocity of every item based on the number of listings that disappear on a daily basis. It is a very, very strong tool. And as such, it does take quite a time to update. I'm going to be doing in a further video uh, an explanation on how to build this kind of tool for yourself in Excel, which makes it way and way easier to use. As you can see right now, we've decreased the time to an hour and 23 to make these 300 gold profit, which is pretty damn good. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to exclude some items that, in my opinion, are not worth the time spent. That means that we're going to be looking at specifically stuff that you make using Karma, Geodes and other account on currencies because these scans everything that can be sold and not everyone has thousands upon thousands of Geodes to spend on a daily basis. So we're going to be looking at what we can remove from the final items to be made. So we're just going to be scrolling down and these are all the items that you need to buy and then it's going to tell you the items that you need to craft, like as an intermediate craft, there it is, before finally making the, the last items. So we're going to keep scrolling until we get to the last items at the bottom of the page. Now that we've gotten there, it is a pretty good idea to start removing what we think is not worth. So by just selecting a few items, generally being in the uh, cook recipes, we're going to be able to get there. So for example, I don't have the recipe for the Sigil of Renewal. I don't have the recipe for the Sigil of Torment. 
So I can already remove these two. And as we go onwards, I'm going to be removing more and more. The sigils of bursting, I do not have either. The clay pot, I do not have that recipe, nor do I have enough items. Same for toxic focusing crystal. It tells you to make 15 of them, but the thing is, it's going to use a lot of imperial fragments. If you do not have that many imperial fragments, that means it is not worth. You can just remove it altogether. Same for the other two sigils of malice down there. The heat stone, I'm going to remove as well because I don't have the recipe. And just like this, as you keep going on and on, you can remove everything. For uh, Occam's Car Insignia, I don't have either. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Superior Rune of Antitoxin, I can remove. Superior Rune of Exuberance, I can remove. The Mad King, I can remove. Then I can also get rid of some others, but we're, we're just gonna keep going till we can see everything that we're gonna remove. Super Rune of Tormenting as well, is the one that I do not have. So now we can also remove the grow lamp and we are going to be removing a few other items that, uh, that are getting crafted there. So I, I think that quite a few of these are actually an annoyance to craft. So it is down to your own taste. Like personally, I tend to skip on the cooking stuff, but uh, all in all, it is your choice at the end of the day. So we're going to exclude the checked items and we're going to see how it is going to end up once we update it. Normally the cost should be reduced significantly, but the profits should not be attacked too much by the decision making we're having right there. So there we go, it's 1.2k gold in for 259 gold out, which makes shy of 200 gold per hour. This is already getting much better, and I think we could further improve it by removing most of the karma recipes. But that is your choice in the end. I have my own list of stuff that I want to make and the way that I want to make it, so all in all it is down to personal preferences. Uh, you could also be changing the uh, recipes to fit different items, like for example if you reduce the minimum profit but go for instead a minimum percent profit, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be kinda good. And uh, you can go for both minimums, which is in my opinion a solid pick. We're gonna see what it does, it means that you're gonna want to have a minimum daily profit of two thousand copper which is uh, 20 silver and that means that if the tool would have you craft one single item which would give you a profit of less than 20 silver it would instead remove it from the list so it's gonna help you reduce the number of stuff you need to buy because the, the time you spend buying items is extremely long and your goal at the end of the day is to manage to reduce that in order to have the best timing possible so there we go, it actually did not change much and uh, I think that if we want to better the situation any further it's going to be about removing some of the uh, cooking recipes. And uh, I think that right now we are pretty good. So this is an idea of how to use the tool. You, As you can see you could be making about 200 gold per hour, 258 gold a day. This requires you to have a pretty hefty initial investment, but all in all, that is something that you could be having. A lot of people who are starting to get into flipping or training post playing usually say, I have my first 1000 gold. And if you don't have that first 1000 gold, you are more than able to go and farm it. The Fractal 40 farm as well as the Silver Waste Ribber farm are both pretty good gold per hour and could get you to that first 1000 gold which then is going to enable you to do all this crafting. There is some further optimization that can be done for the crafting queue over there. My own personal list has me use about 400 gold to make 250 gold profit every day. I think that it is a pretty good list and it is something that I do on a daily basis. But not everyone has the possibility to use as many Kanban specific recipes that I have. So you should not be counting on it either. I hope that you guys have found this video very interesting and that it will be helpful for you to be using this tool in order to make your daily profits. If you have indeed enjoyed it, I will ask of you to please leave a thumbs up under the video, comment under the description, everything that you wanna. If you do not have Gears 2 Path of Fire yet, this channel is finally partnered so you can actually buy Path of Fire with my affiliate link, which I would greatly appreciate even though I will not cause you to such a thing. And all in all, I wish every single one of you some happy crafting and to get rich.